This story from earlier this week, you may remember our talking about it, got a lot of attention and interest from our team. We thought we'd tell you more about it. This tiny satellite that has been built at the Dalhousie Space Systems Lab, the first ever constructed in Nova Scotia. Tiny. You're going to hear how tiny in just a second. But it's really interesting. It's about to go into launch, but it goes on display today publicly on campus at Dow. We thought, hey, perfect opportunity before it goes on public display. We'll put it on display nationally on television. So with me this morning, Arad Garagosli, who is the CEO of Galaxia Mission Systems, and that's a space systems company based in Halifax. But when Arad was an engineering student at Dow, he founded the Dalhousie Space Systems Lab, which which has now designed and built this satellite. So, Arad, welcome to you. Good morning. Good morning, Heather. And Thank one of the students with you presently is Alex Amalal, who is involved in the project, one of some 250 students to participate in this. Thanks for coming on this morning to you too, Alex. Okay, there yeah. it is. Put the, the one in front of you, Alex. Let's just put that to a side in, in, in our mind for the moment. Focus on this, Arad, the thing in the center, and show us around and introduce us to your satellite. For sure. Um, yeah, so this, this is LORIS. It's the first, as you said, the first satellite ever built in Nova Scotia. It stands for Low Orbit Reconnaissance and Imager Satellite. Um, it's, as you can see, it's very small, and that's where the, the technology space is going towards, miniaturization of technology. So we are, um, even though we still have those bigger satellites in the space, uh, there, is a, there is a special place for uh, new technologies that are coming up. So um, when we say how small, what, what are the dimensions? What's the weight? Can you give me some of the specs? Yeah, for sure. So uh, and, uh, this is called the nano satellite class. So this one is about 20 centimeter tall by 10 by 10 centimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they come in a variety of flavors. So you can actually go longer and wider. Uh, but that's very much around the scale of that as big as uh, Loris actually weighs just right under two kilogram. Um, and again, that's another appealing things about these nano satellites. They're so nimble and they're so light that they're uh, much uh, much cheaper to launch as well. Okay, so Loris, Alex, as, as uh, Arad was saying, low orbit reconnaissance imagery satellite. What is it going to do in space? What's its job? So its job is to uh, take pictures of the Earth um, from low Earth orbit. Um, but it was also supposed to uh, be an attempt at um, exploring uh, launching satellites in space from like a Nova Scotian student point of view. So that's sort of part of what the reconnaissance was supposed to mean as well. So that's kind of it. You know, when we've been covering this war in Ukraine, we've been using images from Maxar Technologies. They've been indispensable to us in, in, in telling the story of the fighting there. Satellite images. I mean, you're hopefully not going to be involved in a war, but is that the kind of the imagery that that, that kind of that your satellite could provide to us, Arad? Uh, no, not really. I not mean, that um, kind? Okay. Yeah, the reason that actually Loris has a has an imager payload, so it actually has two cameras at the bottom. Um, the big part of that was the educational side. So once the satellite goes in space, we can actually capture these images, and it's very easy to in, uh, intrigue a lot of people by showing these images. But one of the most important things that Loris actually will be doing is a lot of the research that has been happening in Nova Scotia here, and even for Galaxy, we have developed a lot of commercial uh, components of nanosatellites. So Loris is actually going to bring these into a space. It's going to run them and it's going to give us a lot of information. So it will really help us with a lot of uh, actually exporting our technology outside of Canada into a lot of other countries when it comes to space. So there's a lot of commercial component that Loris is going to help us Attached with as well. To that. So what's in front of Alex right now is uh, one of the many stages in the process of this. The funding came through in 2018. We're here in 2022 and looking at the finished product of, of Loris there in the center. But explain what that one is, is Alex in front of you and, and how it started there and how it became then what's uh, just beside. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all know that technology never really works first try. So it'd be a bad idea for us to move right to this one. So what we were hoping to do was, by printing this 3D model, we'd have a much better idea of where everything fits. So this would include the chassis, which is supposed to support um, all of the boards and the components uh, in the satellite, and all of the boards individually inside. I don't know if you get a good camera angle on this, but yeah, we're seeing pretty see well. But you can hold it up if you want to yeah. point something out to yeah, us. Right. So you can see right here that um, there's multiple uh, boards stacked inside, and these are all meant to work together to make the functionality of Loris possible. So interesting. A long stage of design and, and bringing it to the final form. And I'm thinking, Alex, you were doing this, or I'm not sure if you were from the very beginning, but Arad, you certainly were, right through COVID, designing that with your huge team right through COVID. That must have been crazy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it was uh, it was it was an incredible challenge. It's like obviously being any part of the engineering process, it's there is a lot of that team dynamics and the, that in person component that didn't exist. But um, something unique about Dalhousie Space Systems that the moment that we actually went into uh, lockdown, everybody was so upset about it because they couldn't do. So we actually took that team dynamic and we uh, rapidly changed it to design ventilators at that time because. Uh, we didn't want to just sit around, so uh, that was kind of a side project we worked on, and we actually brought a lot of the expertise from building a satellite to building an open source ventilator at the time. Amazing! Um, so it, it was like, yeah, it was a, it was a very great experience to see an engineering uh, ingenuity in that sense to come together and rapidly come up with new solutions. Even though I'm sure much of it having to be done at distance, Alex, take us through what happens next. I know this is going off to uh, well, it's on display today. It goes off to the Canadian Space Agency, and then what happens from there to get it into space? So this is just the final steps of the handoff process. So um, as soon as um, everything looks good at the CSA, like looks like it's ready to launch, and NRACs approve uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the deployer, then as far as I'm concerned, it's magic. They're going to handle the rest of it. It's going to go up into space, and then, um, yeah, it'll be our But launched out satellite. of the U.S., Arad? Is that what it goes on to the U.S. to be launched, right? Yeah, so Nanorex is the contractor company that uh, will be handling the launch out of the International Space Station. So they will bring this, the spacecraft to Houston. Uh, it goes through a processing uh, stage, and it will actually go on board the resupply mission on board uh, Falcon F9, uh, on board the International Space Station, hopefully by August, if not November. So that's, that's the two-month launch window we've been given. So by the end of this year, and when do you anticipate getting some of those images back and some of that uh, analysis of the technology you're going to be looking at? So the, uh, every satellite, once it, uh, it enters uh, enters orbit, it goes through a phase known as LEOP. So that's where you kind of start checking some of the um, health status of the satellite and see how it's performing in the space. That usually takes about two to three weeks. We make sure that we get some good contacts. After that, we enter or uh, basically our experimental phase, that where we start experimenting with the board that we've designed, with the uh, with the software that we have uh, we have developed at Dell and all the research that again has been gone through it, we go through those experimental, we get the data back, and uh, we can see how it's performing. We'll check space. back with you. Just uh, so interesting, there you are at school, Alex, and a real world assignment, and you're going to see it happening in in real time and in, in real life as your academic work goes into space. And I was thinking for you, Arad, too. You started this as a student. Now you're running the whole company that's in charge of that. That must be a, a proud moment to see your your work and your academic time going into space, literally. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been an immense uh, amount of work to see how all, everyone in the team kind of came together. And I mean, as you can see, this, this is a huge project. It's not something that one person or just one organization can do. We have had a lot of support from the industry, from the government. Um, again, a big thank you to the Canadian Space Agency for really uh, making this possible, but uh, it's been an immense experience. Well, it's a huge project, but a tiny outcome. I just can't get over the size of it right in front of you. That's really why we wanted to, part of the reason we wanted to show. And Alex, you get the last word, because what I noticed when we first looked at pictures at this this week, and I can't help but be remarking on it as I talked to you this morning, what is written on that red ribbon? It's cracking me up. It says, remove before lunch, before <laughs> flight. <laughs> remove before flight. Don't forget... Take that red ribbon out. Yep. What will happen if you don't? It won't work. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to do that then. Yeah. So nice to meet you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Alex Arad, thank you. And best of luck. First satellite ever created in Nova Scotia. And dare I say, probably not the last to come from your lab. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Heather. Have a good one.